Welcome back. Last time, we covered Mythic, but there's a problem with that. Most people don't play Mythic, so what about Normal and Heroic, the raid tiers that most people actually do? Well, tier after tier, we've witnessed a huge decline in the raiding scene this expansion, reaching new lows across the board. The drop-off between each tier is unprecedented, almost halving for both Normal and Heroic since Castle Nathria, and as we talked about, Mythic hasn't fared much better either. And while the percentage of guilds who manage to progress through and defeat the end boss on each difficulty has actually, I suppose this is the good thing, remained somewhat stable, that's only the percentage. The actual number of guilds has unfortunately fallen off a cliff, with 9.2 setting new record lows. In our Mythic analysis, we covered the reasons that will overlap to the other modes, so hey, let's go do a speedrun. General player sentiment and participation numbers being down, less people playing WoW. People having had enough of the Shadowlands because of lore, gameplay, and overly fictitious design philosophies. A lack of regular game updates. The natural losses that happen from tier to tier within in most expansions. Sepulchre's unique difficulty, Season 3's shorter length, and external factors like Blizzard Entertainment's culture, and of course, migration to other video games. Today then, you're going to see that in addition to looking at guild participation, there are fantastic, fascinating things to look at with our parse numbers that show quite a story. Would you like to see Modern versus Classic? We've got that for you too today, and it's honestly insane. Just like ignoring Masterworks, today's sponsor, who let everyday people like you and me diversify into the art market. Now, contemporary art has outpaced the S&P 500 for the last 25 years, by more than double, appreciating more than gold, real estate, and the S&P when inflation is high at a whopping 33% annually, repeating of course. And that's why I've partnered with Masterworks. Masterworks offer investments in that same contemporary art category. Now, importantly, this is not NFTs or anything like that. Uh, this is fractional shares of actual paintings like Picasso, Monet, Banksy. When Masterworks sells a painting that you've invested in, you get a potential return. And uh, the six paintings that they've sold thus far have averaged a 29% net annual return, even through COVID, a bear market, and record high inflation. Now, of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results. But we all do know the general investing wisdom that we should have a diversified portfolio. That's what's ideal. And masterworks make diversifying into art accessible and possible by everyday people. They are seeing record demand, but you can skip the waitlist by clicking the link down in the description. So thanks to Masterwork for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, let's go and take a look at normal mode. Normal, the most accessible form of organized raiding in WoW. While these numbers won't tell the whole story, they certainly do paint a rather bleak one for us. I should say, unfortunately, because I do actually want to see the game do well. Okay, so Normal, the most approachable raid difficulty excluding LFR. You'd imagine it would be pretty stable, but it's actually the one that's experienced the largest decrease in participation ever during Shadowlands. While there were noticeable dips in Battle for Azeroth, they pale in comparison to the most recent few tiers. Looking back to Legion, you can see those numbers do look very stable, at least next to these two later expansions. What's changed since Legion then? Well, I would posit that normal mode will correlate the most to just average gamer interest in WoW, average player numbers, because of normal mode's more broad appeal and accessibility. And I think that means that normal mode is probably a pretty damn good indication of overall player losses. While we don't know overall player losses, I think normal mode shows us that they are probably very large. Getting into the numbers then, Castle Nathria showed awesome promise. A total of 48,419 guilds defeated the first boss, while 35,509 of those managed to clear the rest of the raid on normal difficulty. An 81.9% clear rate. That's pretty awesome when compared to BFA's Nihilotha. And that's where the optimism ends. It is uh, actually uh, only downhill from here on. 
Now, while the percentage of normal guilds that managed to clear Sylvanas came in at a stable 82%, the actual number of guilds that made up that percentage uh, uh, more than halved since Nathria. Given the 48k-ish guilds uh, that managed to clear Nathria's first boss, well, only 21,649 seemed to come back to clear the first boss of Sanctum. That's a 55-ish percent decrease in just one tier, something that we'd actually never seen before. The next closest drop-off was back in BFA, another very controversial expansion which saw a 40% drop in normal going from Aldir to Dazara lore, like for like here. Sylvanas' numbers didn't fare much better either, also seeing a 55% decrease when compared to Denathrius. Okay, after this 55% decrease in normal guilds, surely Sepulchre could turn it around. I mean, compared to all previous tiers of Shadowlands, Sepulchre looked the most promising of all, right? It was full of relatively alt-friendly features, no Corthia to grind, no Maw to grind, the return of tier sets, an exciting feature, and easy enough to obtain double legendaries. And of course, a chance to finally put an end to the Chuckler. Well, while 9.2 almost certainly retained more players than another 9.1 style patch would have, it did not manage to bring back enough players to see an increase in raid participation. This is the bit that's a little bit sad, because in fact, it was during Sepulchre that we saw even more record lows for guild participation. Among these new record lows was the normal guild clear percentage, dropping a staggering 68% from the previous average of 82% for Shadowlands thus far, meaning that this is the second lowest clear rate percentage recorded for normal since Legion, uh, beating only by Nihilotha with 65.54%. So long gone are the glory days of Legion, where the average guild clear rate was 90%. This is normal mode though. What about Heroic? Surely the more dedicated players of the game will be in Heroic. Well, let's take a look. Well, Heroic shows a similar story. Shadowlands saw the lowest ever percentage of guilds achieving ahead of the curve in most of its tiers, in addition to the lowest overall guild participation, with the exception of the marvelously performing Castle Nathria. Digging into these numbers, we see the Nathria set a record in the number of guilds that started and finished a tier, but unfortunately this still translated into the lowest percentage seen for the number of guilds achieving ahead of the curve in recent history. Now, in a way, that's not necessarily surprising, though, because it actually follows the same trend that was seen during Uldir in BFA. Record high turnout for first boss kills, but a record low percentage of guilds actually making it through to that final boss. So, were the final three bosses too much? I don't know, did Stone Legion Generals and stuff kind of hold people back too long? I'm not sure, but I do remember people considering Nathria to be like a, a proper good little challenge. Now, while Sanctum actually managed to see a slight increase in the percentage of guilds attaining curve, which I think does make sense when you think about the relative difficulty compared to Nathria, the actual number of guilds plummeted. It plummeted from 42,778 in Nathria to 20,386 for Sanctum. That's a 52% decrease. For last boss kills, it was a 51% decrease. Not only does the percentage decrease set a new record, but the number of guilds that managed to defeat Heroic Sylvanas at that time was the lowest ever for a Heroic end boss, at the very least since Nighthold. Now, if you think that Sanctum and Sylvanas, you think that's the end of our record lows for Shadowlands, then you are gravely wrong. Although Sepulchre, while not perfect, was much more player friendly when compared to previous tiers, both for new slash alt players and engaged raiders, Heroic Raid participation hit rock bottom. Only 13,279 guilds came back to clear just the first boss, compared to 20,386 for Sanctum. Sanctum itself, of course, was also a massive decline from Nathria. When we go to the last boss figures, though, reality hits you. Only 8,010 guilds cleared Heroic Jailer. I mean, wow. While that's not too much lower than Heroic Sylvanas, these numbers are a huge cause for concern. Literally 
where did everyone go? So, almost two-thirds of the guilds that managed to defeat Heroic Denathrius at the first tier of the expansion had left by the end of Sepulchre. Okay, some may have started a bit late in or whatever, but you get the point here. Attrition is massive. Alarm bells surely must be ringing throughout Blizzard HQ. Okay, let's go and be productive. What caused this? And with Dragonflight, can we expect to see similar issues? Well, while not everything here was literally required, much of it was desirable for performance, and it did help to set a negative tone for this expansion. Okay, 9.0. Daily Maw grinding, including daily quests, killing all rares, and the Eye of the Jailer mechanic causing people to have to follow optimized routes. This was all to get random conduit upgrade items and gem sockets which all required Stygia. Conduit upgrades were random, starting at your lowest item level, and uh, they could upgrade conduits that uh, you literally your spec isn't using. It's one of the most hostile player design decisions ever made. Torghast, of course, had to be ground out for legendaries, and this was the much worse than current original Torghast. Then we had the gold cost for those legendaries, pushing many people towards the WoW token. Okay, patch 9.1, time for it all to get... no, not good. You have the insane Corthia grind of people killing every single rare, looting every single chest, and killing the max amount of relic dropping creatures, and doing all the quests every day for almost a month. That's what the mythic raiders, and maybe some of the more trying hard heroic raiders, felt they needed to do. That, of course, was to get revered and exalted with the Corthia faction so you could get gem sockets and conduit upgrades. Stygian Embers then had to be farmed out for your shard upgrades, and of course you had to farm and pray for shard gear. You also had to farm Torghast for Cinders, and of course Shard Gear would compete with Legendary Slots, meaning it was another hellscape of expensive recrafting. Patch 9.2 was a lot better, but it still had some issues. Bosses were tuned a lot higher than what players had previously been used to, with many bosses including punishing binary pass-fail mechanics that hindered progress. Then, tier sets and double legendaries, those were essentially mandatory for the later bosses, which was troublesome in terms of tuning. Double legendaries were gated behind a quest that took weeks to complete. Uh, of course, that was you know after the raid was um, open. And then the creation catalyst opened on week eight, which many people, Blizzard themselves actually, think was too late. Ouch. I think you can see how player friction was a staple of this expansion and was not helpful. These designs encouraged, or designed anyway, to encourage people to play more aspects of the game Instead, and while we cannot literally causally prove this in a scientifically rigorous way, they do certainly correlate with data that shows diminishing player counts, which then you can mix in with data that, yes, is anecdotal, but generally has been quite large and persistent about the game being fictitious. Of course, there are some mythic-specific aspects as well, and you can check out our mythic video for that. But next, I want to talk about parse counts because I did tease a bit of a classic versus modern thing, and, uh, well, honestly, shit's insane. Alright, let's get to the fun. So one of the things with these Warcraft logs numbers is they actually don't entirely match up with the guild participation uh, peaks and dips, so there's not necessarily a, a correlation. Uh, for example, there was a peak in guild raid participation in Aldir, but the number of parses recorded in Warcraft logs saw a decline. So just interesting quirks of data. Um, there could be many other quirks of data here, which, uh, to be honest, uh, was in the original version of the script, but we'd be going on for like five minutes. So I'm just going to rocket you through to the big comparison that people have been making, and that is classic versus retail parse counts. So while Warcraft Logs parses in classic TBC looked to have quite a slow start, um, albeit still having over 1.6 million parses in the first phase, things really started to pick up during the later phases. During Phase 2.5, when Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep were released into the game, Warcraft Logs saw a total of 8 million parses be recorded. In the following phase, then, when Mount Hyjile and Black Temple were added to the game, this number soared to 15.4 million. Now compare this to current retail, where the last few tiers have barely broken 2 million, and you do begin to ask yourself just how many people are actually playing Classic TBC when compared to retail. It's hard to say. 
well, classic TBC has seen some uh, some dips following phase three. It still managed uh, to you know to record over 2.7 million for phase 3.5 to 4 during uh, the Zolomon release, and over 9.5 million parses in phase five, which is when Sunwell Plateau was added. Now, the last time that Retail WoW exceeded 9 million parses across all difficulties of a given tier on Warcraft logs was back during Legion in both Nighthold and Tomb of Sargaris, which had 14.4 million and 9.3 million parses recorded respectively. The closest that we've seen to those figures was during BFA's final raid, Nihilotha, and Shadowlands' first, Castle Nathria, each recording between 8.1 and 8.3 million parses. Now, let's not forget, though, that these numbers don't entirely correlate to the active, uh, you know, to the number of active players or guild participation figures. It's literally just a parse count. But, you know, generally, if more people are playing, you would imagine that there would be uh, more parses. Another little interesting factoid, too, is Classic TBC is absolutely humongous in China. I suspect in a way that Modern WoW isn't. Of course, it's an absolutely ginormous country, so you would imagine that a lot of them would be inflating up the classic TBC numbers in a way where they wouldn't exactly be impacting the modern game numbers. Overall, then, if you want my opinion on this, I've got to say, I think it's fairly simple, right? And it could actually be worse than this data shows. I know that might sound mad to you, but... Do you remember that slide from the FF14 developers about, you know kind of the quiet majority will just sort of wander away and lose interest in your game first before you start to hear the vocal people. So we were using guild kills. Now, guilds are going to be more active players, right? A guild player is probably going to be more sticky, more likely to stay around because they got friends to play with. So guild numbers falling is absolutely terrifying. But another thing that's really terrifying to me is all the people who aren't in a guild and maybe just pug and stuff like that. What are the silent losses of modern World of Warcraft? I mean, we don't really have a way to quantify that. I do think the game is healthiest when our guild numbers are going up, though. Now, I did say I would talk about Dragonflight in the context of today's video because my mission here is to see how WoW is actually performing. It's not to shit on it. It's not to tell people not to play it. It's to see what's actually happened. And then we got to talk about Dragonflight. And this is potentially where news could get a bit better for us. When talking about the reasons, at least the hypothesized reasons for these declines, it was basically all player friction, right? Now, when I look at the current design of Dragonflight, it seems to not only be more alt-friendly, than Shadowlands. It seems to be radically more alt-friendly than Shadowlands. The borrowed power stuff isn't there. That means that at a fundamental level, to be able to just hop into this endgame instanced content, all you'll really need to do is to make your character, level them up, fill out their talents, and get gear. It really doesn't seem like there'll be a whole bunch of external bullshit to grind. And the idea of the creation catalyst is something the Blizzard said they would like to continue going forward, but that they would unlock it a bit earlier in the tier as compared to the creation catalyst on week eight. So these things do actually give me quite a strong degree of hope for the next expansion. Ultimately with Shadowlands, I think we see that where a lot of things are very powerful in the Legion expansion, I think we see the battle for Azeroth and Shadowlands misunderstood the role of friction, I suppose is a way to put it, um, or coercement into doing content in the overall design of World of Warcraft, and they misjudged that to the degree that a lot of people felt pushed away from the game. At least from my own personal perspective, it's absolutely no surprise that I'm having a blast in Season 4 as compared to prior seasons of the game. Season 4, a time where the game feels a lot less fictitious, a lot more opened up, and I feel like I'm more able to just hop into some content and have fun. Pretty interesting situation. Hopefully Blizzard will have learned the lessons uh, required to not reproduce these issues and these large declines again, because ultimately I think we would all like World of Warcraft to be really strong and healthy. I mean, could you imagine a time where World of Warcraft has more frequent patches, as Ian has said they intend to do, and we're in a situation where, if you're anything like me, 
every four months, you get a fantastic FF14 patch. Maybe every three or four months, you get a fan, you know, you get a WoW patch, maybe a fantastic one even. As a player of MMORPGs who really wants to like both games, that is an absolute dream scenario. And I suppose, while I definitely would say don't pre-order, I will say, here's the hoping that that good future comes to pass. So that's it for me today. A thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to skip their waitlist, the link is down below. And thanks to you for watching. Finally, I suppose, if you have any personal story to shed a, a human light, a human angle to the decreases we've seen, do share it down below. Because this isn't just numbers going down. This is groups of friends breaking up, groups of friends wandering off to new places. I'm sure there's a lot of stories in that. I'm sure the sort of stories that Blizzard would probably find interesting to hear. Okay, take care. See you next time.